Hello everyone, welcome back. Hopefully you've had a, a good Christmas break. Uh, I've spent it mostly in here. Uh, although it's been a very good Christmas on the business front, so I certainly can't complain. Uh, but I'm looking forward to a little bit of downtime after this uh, New Year period is over. Uh, but this video today, I just wanted to do a little bit of a, a recap of the year. Now I know a lot of other people are doing these sort of videos. Uh, but for the last couple of years on YouTube, I've not... Well, I haven't done one, basically, because I'm very tunnel vision about my photography. I tend to sort of do things in a very linear manner, and I'm always moving on to the next thing. So I rarely take pause for breath and actually take any time to reflect on what I'm doing, because uh, I'm always looking at the next thing. But, uh, but I think now's a good time as any to uh, have a look back on this past year and look at the images that I produced, because in terms of the photography, it, I think it's been a pretty good year. Uh, certainly started off well. Uh, the middle part and sort of middle of the summer uh, was a bit quiet, although it, it tends to be quite quiet anyway. Uh, but it certainly finished well with the recent cold snap that we've had in the UK. The weather conditions have been absolutely fantastic. And uh, there's been so many good images that I've seen produced by so many photographers. Uh, I think I said this in a Twitter post a little while ago that um, the UK is can be a testing place to do landscape photography because the weather is so up and down. But there's so many talented photographers in this country and uh, it's been so nice to see the work that they can produce when being given really good conditions to work in. Um, it's just been absolutely great. So anyway, on to, on to the review now. I'm not going to go on and on about this. It's, uh, I certainly don't want to bore you to tears for the next hour or anything, so don't worry, it's going to be fairly brief. Um, but we may as well start at the beginning, which was uh, January. Now, I took a trip to Harris with my friend Dem, uh, Oral, and uh, Greg Whitten. And we had a pretty good week in Harris. Uh, the weather conditions were a little drab, but... We were, out, we were able to get out and shoot every day, which uh, if you've photographed in the Scottish Highlands, you'll know that um, that's a bonus, to be honest, because the weather's rough at the best of times. So we were able to get out and do a lot of shooting, even if the light wasn't that great. Uh, but this first image on the screen, this is one that uh, I took in a very brief period when the light did actually get out. Uh, this one's called Beacon and I was laughing on the video at the time when I took this shot because all three of us were within about 50 yards of each other. Um, but I was the only one that was fortunate enough to have a composition lined up with this rainbow. So when it popped out, uh, the other two were running around like headless chickens trying to compose something. But uh, it only lasted for about a minute, this rainbow. So I was fortunate enough to get it anyway. So yeah, that was a really nice shot. And um, one that's a little different from the stuff that you normally see from Harris. A lot of stuff you see tends to be based around Lusk and Tyre in that area, but this is a little secluded beach that not a lot of photographers tend to photograph. So, so yeah, that was nice. Uh, this other image I'm just gonna show you briefly. Uh, this was shot in the really flat, uh, sort of drab conditions. Um, this one's called Desolate. And these sand patterns that we were shooting, I mean, we must've took four or five visits to these. Uh, sand patterns on the edge of Luscan Tyre. Uh, absolutely amazing foregrounds to work with. And uh, yeah, this, this one really didn't need light, I didn't think. It was more about just working with those intricate lines and, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, not bad. So shortly after that uh, trip to Harris, I took another uh, Scottish Highlands adventure to Sint. And uh, we had really w rough weather there. Absolutely horrendous <laughs> conditions all week, to be honest. Just blowing a gale. Um, but again, it was another one of those trips where it was more about just catching up with mates and, and having a good time than anything. And the photography was a bit of a bonus. Uh, I did produce a couple of images that I was, I was pleased with from that trip, though. This one I'm going to show you. This was from Clackdoll Beach. Uh, this was my first visit to Clackdoll, actually. Fantastic little little beach this. I'd highly recommend anyone uh, paying it a visit. Uh, lots and lots to work with there. Uh, this shot, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't actually film because uh, it was... I mean, I'm amazed I actually managed to get this image sharp because uh, what you... I mean, you can tell it's rough seas, but 
it must have been blowing about 50 or 60 miles an hour at that point. Barely stand up and sideways hill just before this shot. Um, that horrible hill that when it hits your face, it just absolutely stings. Um, so yeah, testing conditions on that trip. Um, but yeah, just a really good chance to catch up with mates. Uh, the early part of the spring and, uh, and summer really wasn't that profitable for me. The weather conditions were really quite drab through that period. We'd, we seem to have weeks and weeks now in this country where the weather just does nothing, basically. Um, and I really like shooting in, well, interesting conditions. I don't necessarily need them to be, you know, golden skies and all that sort of stuff, but just changeable. But we, we seem to be getting less and less uh, interesting weather. I don't know whether that's going to continue or not. But, um, but yeah, not so much produced through that period. Um, but the middle of the summer actually was, was pretty good. I produced um, three or four images I was happy with. Uh, I had a sunrise of cap bells that was, that was really nice. Um, but also this image from High Style was one that I'd wanted to tick off for quite a long time because it's one that gets requested an awful lot in the shop and I've continually had to tell people that I don't have a shot of it. So, um, so yeah, it was nice to, nice to get this shot. And when I was up on the, the, this shoot, the light didn't look like it was actually going to get through. I, was, I thought it was going to be another, um, another strikeout uh, because it's quite a commitment to walk up there. It's it's a good 850 metres up the top of high style, so it's a, it's a fair trek. Um, but the light did get out for about half an hour, and uh, I managed to get this shot. So, yeah, I was really pleased with this one, and a box ticked for the gallery. So, on to the next shoot. Uh, this was a really good morning, this. Uh, absolutely cracking conditions at home fell. And if I hadn't had that hoarfrost recently, uh, this probably would have been the best shoot of the year. Uh, got a couple of images that I was really pleased with. The first one I'm going to show you, um, this was shot well after sunrise actually, but the soft um, muted colour palette, should we say, uh, I thought worked really well in this shot. Um, the tendency for this type of shot would be to go and shoot it right at the point of sunrise, but, um, but I actually think this, this sort of softer image I think works really well. And then the second one, uh, I haven't actually put this in any videos, but uh, this image actually went on to win a category in the recent Natural Landscape uh, Photography Awards, which I was really pleased with. Um, I ended up actually converting this to black and white. I think the one I showed in the video was colour. Uh, but after reflecting on this image, I felt that um, the colour was so overwhelming that I think it actually worked better just taking it all out. So, uh, so yeah, this was the, the final one that I settled on in black and white. Uh, and you can see it up here in the gallery as long, uh, alongside the other one. Um, so, yeah, really pleased with that shoot. And uh, one I'll remember for a little while. And I was so pleased that I managed to actually get it on video as well. Uh, now, on to autumn. The early part of autumn was pretty good and pretty settled. Uh, sort of end of September into October um, we had quite a few mornings where it was quite interesting but because the autumn colour was quite late um, it was still pretty green which was a little bit frustrating and then when things did start to turn we had some absolutely horrendous rain for about three weeks I ran two residential workshops back to back uh, through the end of October into the start of November and both of them were just absolute washouts. Um, credit to all the participants that uh, that were on those because everyone really had to work hard to try and uh, make a fist of those. Uh, I'm sure everyone came away with some great images, but by heck, it was, it was tough going. Um, the two images I want to show you that I took in this period, the first one, uh, this is called Scythe. Now, I'm not much for sort of naming images. Um, I tend to just concentrate on the image itself and rarely does a, a name pop into my head but uh, but yeah I like the shape of this one and I took it literally with half an hour to work in because I, I was in the shop and it was quite quiet that day and I could see the fog forming outside and I thought I'll, I'll close up early and get out and try and do some shooting and uh, yeah literally half an hour these conditions lasted for and then the fog lifted and it was all gone. So, um, so yeah, my one misty woodland autumn shot for this year. Um, well, I did get a couple actually from this shoot, but this was my favourite one. Uh, 
Uh, and then the second image, this is one that was taken on the second residential workshop. Uh, again, a very brief moment of light in amongst all the rain. Uh, this was actually taken from the top of the road near our accommodation. We were planning to drive down to the lake when uh, we were taking these images. Uh, but what I said to the group was, I, I said, look, if we get in the car and drive down there, you, there's a risk that you're gonna miss this light. So everyone basically lined up at the top of the road with the telephoto lenses on, and we were all shooting this view down towards Borrowdale where there was some lovely light uh, breaking out over uh, Castle Crag. Uh, so yeah, this one I was uh, pretty pleased with and shooting on workshops isn't something I, I really do and I certainly don't advise other workshop leaders to be doing it either. But every now and again, if you can fit it in, uh, the odd shot is acceptable. And uh, this was my concession to that. So, uh, so yeah, this is called Into the Light, which is uh, uh, fairly apt, I think. Um, so yeah, one that I actually have printed up and uh, is going to be going on the gallery wall soon, that one. To round off the year, we've obviously had this lovely cold snap recently in the UK. And uh, I was just saying earlier about how nice it was to see so many photographers out enjoying it. Uh, and I was no different. Now, the first part of this cold snap, uh, we seemed to be getting a lot of fog. And I missed a lot of that because I was actually struck down with flu and bronchitis. So I had about 10 days there where I was just absolutely wiped out. I could hardly get off the couch. Um, so I missed a lot of the fog. But fortunately, I managed to recover quick enough um, to get out and do some shooting in the second part of it. Um, so I had a couple of shoots, one down at Manistee, which uh, you saw in one of the videos, uh, a couple of nice images there. And then this last shoot that I did, which is the last video that I put out. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it. Um, absolutely tremendous conditions. And I, and I kept saying it over and over again in the video. I didn't realise I'd repeated myself that much, but uh, those are the sort of conditions that you know, the more you do landscape photography, you really do appreciate them when they come round. Because when you start out, I don't know whether it's rose tinted glasses or not, but when you start out and you see a lot of interesting weather, you, you think that's just going to keep happening. Um, when re in, the re in reality, it doesn't, you know, those, those kind of conditions are pretty rare. Um, so in my position, obviously running this gallery, I was acutely aware that I needed to get something uh, that I could sell in here as well as put in my portfolio. Uh, and this shoot that I did in the Eden Valley, uh, I did thank my mate Mark Little John. Um, I'll thank him again because uh, he really did me a favour. Uh, and he'll hold me to those drinks that I said in the video. I'm sure he will. Um, yeah, what a shoot that was. I've just seen nothing like it. Um, I was actually talking to a couple of photographers uh, at the time, just after I'd done this shoot, and they'd been up and shot this area as well. And what we were seeing, uh, the two photographers, by the way, one's called Mike Prince, who's a, a great local photographer, he's not on YouTube, and the other guy's Jason Hudson, who is on YouTube. I'll, um, I'll put a link to his channel. Definitely go and watch Jason's stuff, produces some lovely photography. Uh, but we were both, all three of us were saying that uh, processing those images was a real struggle because it's not a colour palette that we're actually used to working with in this country. I'd certainly not shot any images in those conditions before. So I found processing some of the images a bit of a, a, bit of a task because I just, I, I had no frame of reference to go off. So the, the sort of extreme contrasts of the, the warm and the cold, really, I was struggling to find a balance with them, but uh, I got there in the end, hopefully. Uh, so these images that I shot, um, the first one, this was the hardest one to actually uh, process, but I was really pleased in the end with what I come up with. Um, it's got a very icy blue feel to it, uh, but just a hint of, of warmth from the, the light there. I didn't want to overdo the the warmth in the light because it ends up being too much of a contrast um, but yeah really pleased with that one uh, the second one I said in the video that I was a little on the fence with because the the main focal point of the image I thought was perhaps a little bit too far away but in the end having processed it I was really pleased with how it come out um, so yeah nice nice image that one and then the last one which 
I didn't really let on at the time when I was shooting it on the camera um, because you never want the 10th faith. But when I'd seen the preview, I thought, that's got to work, surely. Um, and it has. It's, uh, I've been really pleased with it. And this is my favourite image of the year. Now, I put this in the, in the last video, but uh, I think it's worth uh, having another look at it because it's not often that you get conditions like that and it's not often that you get to sit back and in, enjoy something like that because uh, it's, it's not so much about being you know, self-congratulatory about your, your images and all that sort of stuff. It's just nice to look at a memory like that and an experience like that. And, um, you know, that's the joy of photography, of being able to look at an image and instantly you, you're sort of transported back there to that experience. And um, that's certainly what this image, image does for me. Uh, when I put it on social media, it went absolutely nuts. I think when I put it on Twitter, it had something like 170,000 impressions or something like that. Um, so anyway, other people seem to like it. Um, so yeah, not that it's been seen that much on YouTube because um, such is the way YouTube works. Uh, this sort of work, will, the platform would rather bury it behind, you know, mediocre gibberish about lens comparisons and all that sort of stuff. But there you go, that's probably another discussion. So yeah, that's my little recap of the year. Some of my favourite images there and uh, hopefully 2023 will be uh, an even better year. I uh, just want to talk to you very quickly about a couple of things that I've got coming up uh, on the channel. So firstly, I'm going to Harris uh, in the next couple of weeks. This will become a yearly thing really in January. So hopefully the weather will be a bit better this time and I can produce some, uh, some even better images than I did last year. Um, in March, I'm going to Lefortan for 11 nights. Uh, Lefortan's been one of my bucket list for an awful long time. Uh, it's the one place that I've always had in my mind that I really wanted to go to. I think some of the other places, which I'm sure are, are brilliant, places like Iceland and the Faroes and all those sort of spots that people go to. I think if I'd wanted to really go to those places, I'd have been to them by now. Um, but the Fortin, yeah, one I really want to go to. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, workshops now, that's not something that I really promote too much on this channel because people obviously just want to watch people out shooting photography. Um, but I do have uh, three residential workshops next year. One's already sold out. Uh, the second autumn one has got two, two spaces left on it. And then the winter one, which I've just put up on the website now, uh, that's got four spaces on it. So I'll put a link in the description for those. Those are all four nights, three days shooting, uh, single occupancy accommodation, all that gubbins, all the details are on the website. Um, an e-book. Now, th this is something that I've had in the works for quite a long time, actually, um, but I'm finally at a place where I'm nearly finished with it. I'm going to be putting that out in the next month. Uh, I'm going to price it reasonably. It won't be priced after or anything like that. Um, it's mainly aimed at beginners and intermediate photographers, and it's it's a sort of general overview of landscape photography and uh, the things that I've learned over the years and uh, hopefully that can help improve your photography too and depending on how that one sells I'll probably do another one which will be for more advanced photographers um, but yeah sign up to my newsletter and, uh, and I'll keep you posted with all that my latest newsletter is just going out as I'm putting this video out um, I need to be held account to putting more newsletters out next year because um, I love doing them um, they're really enjoyable and the feedback I get from uh, people who subscribe to them really enjoy them as well so hold me to account to putting more newsletters out I'm going to try and put them out ev every other month um, so bi-monthly and uh, yeah so that's that's what I've got coming up in 2023 uh, I wish you all a happy new year and uh, happy shooting next year and I'll see you on the next one